was once the right hand of Vladimir Putin, but now fears for his life as an opponent of the Kremlin. As Donald Trump, the president of the United States, says he'll hold out his hand to Russia, we'll talk to the country's former prime minister about what that could mean. I'm Dana Lewis, and this is Insight. Welcome to Insight. Donald Trump says he wants to engage with Russia and establish a new relationship with Vladimir Putin. That's despite Western opposition to the annexation of Crimea, the Kremlin's tactics over Syria, and accusations of meddling in the American election. While there are plenty of critics outside Russia, there are few loud voices in Moscow who are opposed to Putin, and one of them is former Prime Minister Mikhail Kashyanov, who served under Putin for four years and I have the pleasure of having him join us in studio now. Mikhail, good to see you again. Great pleasure. I want to first talk about this very important phone call which took place over the weekend from the White House with President Trump speaking to President Putin. They've talked about agreeing uh, or, or uh, cooperating on Syria, helping each other on nuclear non-proliferation, and probably a meeting between the two presidents in the coming future. A thaw in Russian-American relations? Yeah, that's very much important, uh, absolutely. But uh, the telephone conversation lasted like 45 minutes. But in fact, there is no, not much of something like promises to each other. An important thing that the, the word sanctions never were mentioned by one or another president. It means, it means just the, the, the Mr. Trump is not prepared just to implement what he promised just publicly as in any populist manner that he would lift sanctions, etc., etc. He wants something in return. What Putin could deliver to him? I doubt that there will be some kind of transaction, win-win uh, win transaction or deal, how Mr. Trump call it, because both of these presidents, they are both of just uh, desire to get 100 percent winner, to be winners, both. Putin and Trump. That's why I just I think in a few months situation we will have some kind of um, difficult relations. Let them meet once, then we'll see what the outcome will be. I mean, it seems like Donald Trump, the great deal maker, wants to do a deal. I mean, maybe some reduction in nuclear warheads uh, will withdraw sanctions. Uh, do you think that there's a deal to be done with President Putin? Uh, absolutely not. That that sounds like a little bit. Um, um, it sounds a little bit, uh, a little bit, um, an arrogant manner because just uh, asking for that, Mr. Trump, just emphasizes that you, Putin, is important for me only because of nuclear power. That's why he immediately stepped in in such a conversation, reduce your nuclear power, and then I leave the sanctions. That is absolutely unacceptable for Mr. Putin because just he is recognition in the world and he forced everyone to, to, to contact and discuss with him because of nuclear power. There are two positions that uh, the permanent member of Security Council because of nuclear power and nuclear button. That's the only issue Mr. Putin now owns. Because Russia is absolutely uh, contracting an economy and we have facing problems and problems. Every year, minus 10 percent of real income of people, GDP goes down. That's absolutely the case. Putin needs victories outside, victorious wars. That's why Syria, Aleppo, is one of them. Do you not think that it's good that these two countries could start talking together once again and cooperating, or do you think that it's... Absolutely dangerous. Absolutely, to talk. absolutely great. It, it should be because two nuclear powers should discuss it, and especially on such a, such a situations what we have in Ukraine or what we have in in Syria. That's absolutely the case. But Putin taking a wrong path. The, instead of uh, being a part of international anti-terrorist coalition, as we did against Al Qaeda in the beginning, um, uh, 2001, 2002, 2003. Indeed, we were just in very, very just close cooperation at that time. I remember that time. That was excellent relations with the United States, excellent relations with the European Union, with Great Britain. But now, what happened now? Just Putin now just creating some kind of problems, and because of the simple reason, so-called. I would say Arabic Spring disturbed him much. Ukrainian color revolution and then Arabic Spring. And just to keep, to keep Bashar Assad in power. That is the main point, purpose for Mr. Putin right now. Because he potentially could think who could be next. There are not many dictators left. 
And that's what I think just the main, most important point. Just the whole world says already, and the special United Nations, Nations Commission said just that Assad applied the chemical weapons. That's why he already criminal. But Putin says that's a legitimate president, the only person in the world, and continue to fight with this. And opposition, Syrian opposition, would never come to any, any agreement because just Assad. Let's go back to I mean, the beginning of sanctions, though. I mean, this is because of the annexation of Crimea. It's about the Russian intervention in Ukraine. You supported sanctions. Do you still, and why? Uh, first of all, as a result of annexation of Crimea, and I would say supporting or just direct involvement in, in eastern Ukraine. In fact, in fact, that that was the circumstances which moved or pressed foreign leaders, Western leaders, to impose sanctions. Nothing of those circumstances disappear. That's why I think it should continue to do continue to 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 to, 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 to apply. Why I supported? Because first, it was individual sanctions against those people who was involved in decision making and implementing those wrong, wrong policies. And secondly, so-called sectorial sanctions. Sanctions against those instruments in, in, in Mr. Putin's hands, like state banks and state corporations, where they drawing money just to implement this policy. What Mr. Putin did? imposed everything on people. That's why just Russian people, especially middle class, just losing every year by 10% of their incomes. I interviewed you first, I think, 10, 12 years ago when you were running for president. You predicted very accurately, and I remember it well, that oil prices would tank. And when they did, President Putin would lose his support and he would tumble from power and maybe in a very bloody way. Uh, that there would be a real uprising in Russia. You got one of them right, oil prices, but Putin is more popular than ever. Yeah, the problem is, during these 10 years, the propaganda worked in some effective manner, just strong and effective manner. And we continue to have Russia as a TV set country. Half of population have the only source, the only source of information, central television, controlled by Putin. And this television imposed the mobilization spirit. And people just feel what Mr. Putin wants. We are just surrounded by enemies. We should get together around our leader, etc., etc. Like in Soviet Union time, Mr. Putin uses the same thing. Other part, other 50% of population living in the big cities using internet. Of course, I realize that. But the pressure and fear to be put in jail or something just works. That's why people escaping from Russia or just escaping in their families and their kitchens. That's what we have the situation now. Do you think Russia was absolutely involved in the hacking uh, in the American election? No, at least just I can, uh, I can rely on all those comments by American politicians and Mr. Trump himself recognized as the case, reading all those reports. That's why just I have no any other information, but in the reaction of Russian authorities just confirmed me that in a certain manner just that was the case. And in fact, we've seen more arrests of some computer experts who are supposedly uh, employed by the FSB, the Federal Security Service, the, the, the successor to the KGB. Another one was arrested over the weekend, supposedly on treason charges for cooperating potentially with uh, American authorities to trace the hacking. Yeah, that's what uh, I can accept. I can accept this information explanation. Just I would not argue. I, I have no confirmation, but uh, I could, could take it as a reliable, reliable uh, judgment. On if you do, then. What do you think they're prepared to do in European elections? You have some big elections coming up in Germany, in France. Do you think that potentially Russian authorities will meddle elsewhere? Potentially, yes, but uh, we still have time. Those governments of those countries have time just to draw lessons from American experience and just to prepare themselves because it will be absolutely awful situation if just French or German elections would be interfered by this matter. That's, uh, that's the most important thing for, for, for existence of Europe. I mean, and pursuing the same consistent policy. That's what we are concerned as a Russian Democrats because we, we rely on some kind of moral support each other especially us now just being in Russia, living inside Russia. But if just the whole policy goes in the wrong direction, this absolutely would destroy all those values we're all devoted to and believe we have other governments and politicians just sharing the same manner. If it's not the case, I think just the world completely change. British Prime Minister Theresa May told Trump, go ahead and talk to Putin, but be wary. 
What would your, your advice be to him? <laughs> yeah, that should be absolutely, absolutely careful because just, uh, you know, just from the experience of previous, previous uh, discussions, you remember German Chancellor, one or another, you remember just um, uh, his meetings with the other leaders, and uh, I think that, uh, that uh, absolutely uh, right warning that should be careful because Mr. Putin just initially and inside he's a KGB agent. He not a real politician because he never ran in a competitive environment. With what, with, 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 <laughs> but, help but, me understand with what strategy. He's administrator. <laughs> with what strategy? Is the strategy just to interfere and upset Europe and the West? Or does he have a longer term the, strategy? The, 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 the immediate strategy is so that to press the West to recognize Mr. Putin's Stop, stop teaching me democracy. He knows himself what, what democracy he wants to impose in Russia, and he already does this. That's, that's the Soviet Union stuff. Uh, uh, elections of governors and just pressing all political parties for forceful registration and uh, cut 30 parties just left only only six and that's what he uh, created a narrow bottleneck for for for, for political environment that's what uh, me and uh, uh, president yeltsin when he was alive we were criticized we criticized uh, putin for that yeltsin understood democracy was in reverse this is insight coming up we'll continue our conversation with former russian prime minister and putin critic mikhail kishanov